you're going to need these two diagrams on your card. You're going to want a horizontal ellipse, and you're going to want a vertical ellipse. Both of them on there will make um, this easier. So we're going to actually split this section in two parts. We're going to talk about horizontal ones. We'll talk about vertical ellipses. And there's going to be formulas that go with both. Okay, the key thing you most need to know um, about ellipses is that they have, we label certain parts or distances on the ellipse. You might want, um, if you've got colored pencils or later on, you may want to go over these in color so you can see them better. But since an ellipse, it's not like a radius anymore, it's not the same distance from the center. An ellipse does have a center, but it depends on whether we want to measure the long distance across the ellipse or the short distance, we use different letters. So we call the distance from the center to the long end, we call that A. Distance from the center across it the short direction that's B. And then, since we also need to know where the foci are located, we call the distance from center out to the focus C. So all ellipses have an A, a B, and a C. If you're going vertical, it's the same way. Center to the long end is A. Center to the short side is B. And center to a focus is C. Now the interesting part, A is actually on there twice. Can you visualize another distance between two different points that would have the length of A? The top to the bottom. Like cross there, is that what you mean? Okay. Well, if this is B this far, from center up was B, what would from center down be? B. So that distance across there? That's B, and this is B. We actually have two Bs. So actually, that's we, that is the part we concerned, we're concerned about, and that goes with both of these. That's called the minor axis. So if you measure the whole distance across it, it's just two Bs. I want that out of my way for the moment. And so while we're talking about then, if you want to measure the distance across the ellipse the long way from long end all the way across from end point to end point, what's that going to be? That's going to be two A's. So the major axis is two A long. And this is where I shouldn't have pulled my tape loose. It actually turns out if you measure from the top where B hits down to the focus, so if I go in a diagonal line, that's also A. So the distance from center to the end and then that diagonal distance, they're both A's. Because of that, what did I just form? I have a form, I got a triangle. Not only do I have a triangle, I have a right triangle. So what formula can I use on that right triangle? What formula do we know about the size of a right triangle? Okay. You all want to tell me a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And this is my prime example of why you should never say the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Depends on where a, b, and c are at. In this case, which two sides should get added? b and c, because you add it's the short two sides, it's the two legs have to equal the hypotenuse. So in this particular case, it's b squared plus c squared equals a squared, because a squared is the hypotenuse. 
Now, in reality, what you're going to use that for all the time, once I show you the formula here in a second, the formula is going to tell you A and B. C does not come in the formula. You're going to have to calculate C every time when you want to know C. So you're actually going to use this if I subtract the B squared over. C squared equals A squared minus B squared. That's the version you're going to use because you're going to need to calculate C. And that's true whether it's horizontal or vertical. It doesn't matter. So you're going, but what's the equation of the ellipse look like? <coughs> and I'm going back to the internet except a second here. Okay. At the moment here on the gizmo, they have an equation up top. I want, you'll notice right now the center's at zero, zero. I'm moving the center somewhere else so that you can see what's happening. But I'm off the edge. Maybe I can go three. There we go. It needs the last moment. God darn it. It's really hard to get this exactly right. Every time. Yeah, okay. There, I got a center at negative three, positive two. So that's where my center is. What changes on this equation? If the center is at negative three over, what did it do to the quantity? Change the sign. Is it any different than what you did on circles? No, it's exactly the same as circles. You just read the center out by changing the sign. It's a, in fact, it's identical to circles. So what's, what's different about this equation than your circle equation? Yeah, you got numbers on the divide bottom. You got division. An ellipse equation is always equal to one. So you have to have it equal to one every time. Now, my question is, you'll notice this has a six on the bottom, six squared on the bottom. What does six units have to do with that graph? Okay. But you got to remember, you're measuring from the center. So even though we're sitting at six right here, up at six, but the distance from center would actually be, that'd only be four units from two to six. What's actually six units long on here? The major, so, because I'm currently sitting at an x coordinate of negative three, my center's at negative three. If I come this way, yeah, that's positive three to the end of the ellipse. So that's a, length a is six units long. So it's telling you A is 6 here. What's the 4 have to do with it? Yeah, I'm up 4 from the center. 2 to 6 is 4 units long. So it's up 4. So those numbers on the bottom are A and B. But they're going to be squared when you see them. Now, how do you know, though, which one's A and which one's B? I mean, can we always go with A is the first one and B is the second one? Well, let me switch. I'm going to cause it to switch the 4 and the 6. I'm going to make it switch places. If I cause the 4 and the 6 to switch places, what happens to my ellipse? Yeah, it's vertical. So what about this equation is telling you it's vertical? I switched the 4 and the 6. The bigger numbers on the right side. Is the key thing, big numbers under y. If the big numbers under y, then the big amount goes on the y-axis. When the big number was under x, then we were going horizontal because the big amount was being counted on the x-axis. So the variable it's under tells you which way it's going to be. A will always be the bigger number. B will always be the smaller number. That's kind of key to know. And that's true on both horizontal and vertical. A is always the larger number. A is always the larger number. Consequently, then, I can actually give you the formulas now. 
If it's horizontal, it's going to look like a circle. You're going to have two quantities squared. But the ellipse is always equal one. And if it's horizontal, the big number is under which variable? Under x or under y? It's under x. So you will have a squared under x, and you'll have b squared under y. If it's vertical, it's going to be reversed. You're going to have the larger number under y. So a squared will be over here under y, b squared will be under x. Key thing is, both of them squared, both of them added. <coughs> but the larger number is what you're looking for always. Okay, the one other thing I want as far as formulas, okay, you're going to be able to read the center out of there because you can just pull center out of the quantities just like you did with a circle. So center's not going to be a problem. You're going to be able to read A and B out of there with no trouble. The one thing you are going to, they're going to ask you for is the coordinates of the foci or foci. Sorry. So if you want the coordinates, if you look at it, we're going to always know where center is. What letter do we have to know to get over to a focus? C. So in order to get over to the focus, I just need to take the center and make it move to the right or move to the left, because realize there's a focus on each side. So all we do is we take the center. The center's H and K, just like it was on a circle. We want to move over C units, since that's the focus. So we just say plus or minus whatever C is. In this case, I added it to the X coordinate, because I needed it to move sideways. If I'm down here on a vertical ellipse, It'll be just the opposite. I'll add C to the Y coordinate because I need it to move up and down to get to the focus. So you'll take center and add C on is all it takes to get to a focus. Okay. <coughs> um, I may come back. If I have time, I'll come back at the end and talk about eccentricity. If I don't get to do that today, that's not crucial. I'm more concerned about, can we work a problem? So we're going to go try to work a problem here. I, I evidently didn't change my problem. Hold on one second. Okay. Due to time constraints and the fact that I think this takes some processing, we're going to cut right to the chase. I'm going to do one where you have to guess everybody's favorite. Complete the square. Woo! Okay, and thank you for being polite, but last vlog went. You mean we have to complete the square on every kind? Yes. We do. We have to complete the square. We'll complete the square next time when we do hyperbolas. It's just part of the game. Now, there's one wrinkle, though, to complete the square. Most of this is identical, but the very beginning is different. Why can't I go through here on circles? You would have saw that 25 up front. You would have divided everything by 25. Why wouldn't I want to do that here? It's not going to divide. And the key thing is x squared and y squared, You have those have to be 1x squared and 1y squared. If I divide by 25, my y is not going to have a 1 in front of it. So instead, and this, by the way, is how you know it's an ellipse and not a circle. It's got different coefficients on it. They're not the same number on the x squared and the y squared. So instead of dividing, we're going to pull a little algebraic trick. But I have to get my x's together first and my y's together first. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to rewrite this and I'm going to put the x's together and leave a gap. Then I'm going to put the y's together, leave a gap. What do you suppose I want to do with the 225? Yeah, it's got to go to the other side. So we're going to subtract 225. I 
still can't complete the square because I got a 25 sitting here. I can't divide by 25 because I'd have to divide everything by 25 and that would mess it up. So instead, we're going to get sneaky. Think of this as, this is going to be a little trinomial here. Can't I just factor 25 out front? Just pull out the common factor? So I'm going to put the 25 in front, which will now leave me my plain old x squared that I wanted. If you pull, pull 25 out of 150, it's only 6. Leave your gaps, though. We're still completing the square here in a second. So what do you suppose I do to the y? You take the 4 out. Yep. So we're going to pull the 4 out front, which is going to leave me y squared minus 10y. And then I'm still going to need to leave a gap. And then I have my equals negative 225 over there. Now that you have a 1x squared and a 1y squared, now you can complete the square. So what completes it if that's a negative 6? Because half of it's negative 3 squared would be positive 9. Okay. Here's where I got them last time. They were all, they were virtually yelling at me, put the 9 on the other side. Did I? If I add 9 here, last when we did circles, we added 9 to the right-hand side. Do what with the 25? Yes. Since this is in a quantity being times by 25, you got to take the 9 times the 25, which is actually 9 times 25 is 225. So I have really added 225 to this side, which means I have to add 225 to the right-hand side. And you're not done. Should have that in red. <coughs> so what completes the next one? I should add, once again, I have to complete that square. So half of 10 is negative 5 squared would be 25. But I have to times it by the number up front. So that's at 100. So I'm adding 100 to the other side. Number one mistake on these, forgetting to multiply out front. It's so easy to do so you get the hang of it. Okay, now it's fairly normal. I've completed the square. The whole point was to get my quantity squared. If this is x squared minus 6x plus 9, what quantity squared would that become? That's a negative 3, so it's a minus 3. The 4 is out front here, and I have y. The number I did was minus 5. And then... That actually adds up really nice. That adds up to 100. Okay, last step. What's the ellipse supposed to be equal to? 1. So I have to get the 100 to become a 1. How do I get 100 to become a 1? Divide by 100, yeah. You don't want to add or subtract because you don't want to add or subtract something over here. But this is actually, I always think this is a little bit magical that this works. And it will do this every time. Hmm, does 25 cancel into 100? Yeah, 25 cancels into 100 and leaves you 4. 4 cancels into 100 and leaves you 25. And so you're now down to a perfect equation of an ellipse. You've got x minus 3 squared over 4. You've got y minus 5 squared over 25 equals 1. Now the downside is you just got it into proper form, namely all the parts. That's the equation. That's our final equation now. But what's the center? Yeah. Just read it out of the quantities, change the sign, just like a circle, 3, 5. Okay, I'm going to ask you if it's going to be horizontal or vertical. So is it going to be a wide ellipse or a tall ellipse? And the big question is, where's the big number? It's under the 25, so it's going to be a vertical. Um, 
um, it now you need to find A and B. How do you know which number is A and which number is B? The bigger one's A. So it's A25. You have that's A squared there, so you have to square root those numbers on the bottom. So that's just five. In which case then B is going to be the square root of four or two. So you do have to remember to square root those. Okay, I'm like massively over time, yikes.